Down here, bottom right, with amazing swarm host play on Whirlwind. He is... So Hiva. Big deep breath there. In the upper left, we've got our Protoss player, the best PVT in the world, but can he win here in a PVZ? He is. LG I am first. All right. We'll see what happens this time, Tasteless. He is going for that pylon in the main again, so if Hiva goes for like a speed lane type of play. Could be very strong. Yeah, it could be. You know, some Protosses can hold that from time to time, but uh, it's pretty tough. Uh, it's a nice quick sitting, scout, at least. Yeah, about to say that. He's setting out this scout right away. Mm. Going to try to get in there and see what's going on. In fact, if you scout on 9 from a, with a gateway expand, it's not really that common. And it can throw Zerg off and make them think, okay, this is probably a forge expand. Because most Protosses scout on 13 after the gateway. And well, when they see that, they're like, well, I know what this build is already. It, it, and usually... Um, you know, you would probably do that if you weren't against a player like Iva. <laughs> mm. But <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> I, I think a lot of the early Scott, a lot of the play styles we've had here from Flash uh, against Iva and and first against Iva are clearly tailored to deal with a player like Iva. Yeah, have to uh, agree with you on that one, Tasteless. I want here's the here's a question for you. Yeah, you're Jack G, sitting. Uh, you know, wherever he's sitting right now in the back room watching the match. Who are yep. you hoping for? First, who you beat, but it was like a good set, or a Hiva, who you probably think overall you're better than, but is very dangerous. Uh, that's a it's a hard question. I would say Hiva, but then again, hoping you, for Hiva to win. You, you look at these players like Hiva. You know, all these guys probably think, well, of course I could beat that guy. He just cheeses, well, and then it, it doesn't work. Uh -oh. They think that to their own their own folly, tasteless. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's not good. He really stalled that out. Look at this yeah. third he's taken. This is a little late. Yeah, uh, it's pretty late for the first expansion. Nearly going. losing that uh, that drone there too. That was scary. And look at this cute move. That's a good play side. The Zerglings won't see that coming down the ramp. Oh, the Overlord will though. Peekaboo, peekaboo probe, peekaboo nerd. And now, because the Zerglings have to attack that pylon, he can send these uh, this probe and hit into the main now. And again, all he's doing is just getting as much information as possible yeah. while keeping Hiva occupied and first really just in control of this game here. You know, sometimes as those lings are about to pop out and they've really delayed your hatches a lot, the Zerg will throw down gases for a crazy all-in, but Hiva not doing that. You know, I think he's he feels good enough about his Protoss, or his Zerg versus Protoss, and as we saw, he definitely can play it. You know, he's. Oh, I yeah. feel like, as far as like long games go, his best is this matchup, and he showed us that last season as well in WCS Korea. I love Hive's games. Yeah, I really, really do. Fun. So it looks like the gateway wall is going to come up here now. He needs to get that up uh, pretty quickly here. We did have that nice little play there from Hive in that last game where he sent those fuelings out just to kill the pylon and then yeah. to run away to slow down the overall tech. There's actually uh, six more lings on the way. Now, I don't think this is to break through the wall, because they're slow, but this could be to kill the rocks at the third. Like, both the rocks uh, near his base, so he can have it connected, but also you can bring these up and kill the rocks at the Protoss third, which makes it so if they want to take a quick third, it can't be there, which is the safest spot. Yeah. Because, you know, they have to kill the rocks, they don't have enough units in the early game. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's his next move with those lings. Ooh. So, the uh, Stargate and Roche Warren have been started. Uh, I would not be surprised if we saw a similar setup from last game. Getting mm. that uh, Phoenix out there, and then to scout, and then to get that Void Ray next. Yeah. Nice. Just in the nick of time, getting that set up. Yeah, it looks like so far, first is just going to go for the same build as last time. I think he probably views that last game as an anomaly. Yeah, he may. He may look at that and just say, oh, you... You know, that Broodlord switch was really smart. It was a really good play there. Uh, he was so robo-heavy, he just didn't have what he needed. Uh, you know, sometimes that'll happen to you, so... does look like he wants to go for something pretty similar. He is getting a couple sentries right now, as he should. Very safe play. And, uh, and uh, now we're going to see Warp Gate get used here. Yeah, he's, he is going to go for that quick third. Those rocks uh, not taken down. The Lings are heading over here, so they might force a cancel on a Nexus if... First takes it too quickly. But first this Why game, he? he's, uh, he's skipped that. He's okay, skipped there we go. Stargate, so. 
For a second, I got confused right there. I think that was not a warp gate. <laughs> uh, so we got the... Um, oh, we just got them trying to tear down these rocks. Whoa! Almost getting in there. We're going to walk around now. And first is going to want to hide that probe. If he does go in there. No, he's not going to go in. He just kind of let the Lynx sit out in the front. The yeah, Lynx now uh, headed southbound back towards Hyvis territory. Huh. This is, I think, probably the easiest map for Protoss to just get a third. Uh, yeah. Disputed. I can't think oh, of any yeah. other map that's as good as this. Third, and even the fourth, I would say, uh, yeah. it's easier to take a fourth here than any other map as well. It's just, you know, I, I quite like this map for Protoss, even though, you know, in the late game, Swarmhost play can be very difficult to deal with. It's just, you're so powerful before well, they get the overwhelming Protoss, amount. Well, if you're a macro Protoss, you're going to want this map early on. Yeah. You're going to be able to get the advantage that you uh, should have. Certainly. Well, we have the Twilight on the way. Wouldn't it be surprised if he goes blink and plus two immediately off that? In fact, I'd be surprised if he did something else. <laughs> Hiva going right up to Lair. Not sure what he's going for. I would love to see him go into Muta. That would be cool. Hiva was really good with Mutas in StarCraft 1. Well, Muta's, uh, Muta techs can be very strong on this because it's easier to defend your bases and with it, the spine crawlers. You if, know? You, if your opponent didn't open Stargate as well, uh, then it's a lot more powerful. But look, he's going straight into Infestation Pit. So this, it, yeah, it looks like it's probably going to be Stormhost play again. And this is the, the type of Stormhost play I've seen a little bit more out of Hiva, which is well, the three base really quick. Uh, like It's a bit quicker, basically, than what we saw last game. Now, on this map here, um, with the combination of spine crawlers and swarm hosts, they're absolutely terrifying. Yes. They're so hard to deal with. There's, it, It's a big area to try to defend everything with, but it's a very doable yeah. task. The map is kind of small. You know, it's kind yeah. of together. You can control it. You know, there are several lanes, but you can keep tabs on Protoss because for them to switch lanes, it takes a little bit, uh, and a lot of locusts are going to go through. But, oh my god, never mind. Looks like this is probably a Viper Rush. Oh, cool. Yeah. Kind of a little bit of a standard play. We'll see what he can get done with that. You know, Roach yep. Hydra Viper, if you don't... I don't care what army you have as Protoss. If you don't have High Templars with it for feedback, it can be very hard to deal with. You know, Blinding Cloud will be very good against a non-Colossus-based army. And against colossus space, of course, Abduct. Yeah. Well, he's going to push out here just a little bit. Uh, all the gateways are now finishing. They're going to be turned into warp gates. Blink now about to be done, as well as the uh, Protoss attack upgrade. And uh, it looks like, you know, if, if First actually could do this correctly, he could do a decent amount of damage if he can warp in some more. He does it the Mothership, of course, so he can, he can recall. Yeah. He's going to send out these fake phoenixes. Wants to see where this army is. He sees that... Uh, okay, he sees he has to go back, actually. I think he saw... The, just the tip of that army here. Mm. Uh oh, we're gonna have to have force fields here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And oh, he lost two sentries during that. So that was that was a nice pickup from Hiva right there. You know, it, it seemed like he actually he was trying to do like two things at once, but the force fields did not yeah. help at all. It actually just slowed him down. You actually need to make like a full wall there and push stuff back. But, okay, uh, now Hiva here going to try to tear down these rocks. First in a defensive position. No. no, it would blink. Yep, he could poke out just like that. You know, he does have uh, the Templar Archives done, so he can't... He does have some High Templars. That's really going to help out. He has to make sure that these Vipers aren't too efficient against him. Because right now, Hiva is maxing out on Layer Tech plus Viper, which uh, is good for a little bit. But as Protoss reaches a max and has the right tools, becomes a lot, a lot weaker. Yeah, and again, first can hold this... But it is, like, really, really tricky. Mm -hmm. Just the sheer multitude of units. And I like what First is doing here with the War Prism. He wants to get those Zealots and have them attack the expansion or the main or wherever. Yeah. Wherever that big army is not. Because this maxed out Zerg is going to be... It, this is like... Think of this like a big battering ram for the Zerg. He's going to just try to tear down the entrance. But look at what Hive is doing. Brilliant play, leaving some Hydras back. He assumed that there would be a War Prism right now. But, in fact, First hasn't moved in with it. So... Hiva just took his Hydras and decided, okay, it is time for this hit. He's bringing all of his units. He's maxed out. But he is making spine crawlers at home, too. He knows that one way to lose this game is to get harassed while uh, attacking here. Okay, he's hitting the front now. 
Nice force fields. Oh, so well done. Not really hitting the feedbacks he needs. And it looks like the wall is going to be broken. All right, he's continuing to move up here. A lot of force fields have gone down. But I think the sentries are all going to be picked up momentarily here. Uh, he has uh, no more energy, it looks like, for enough force fields to make a wall. And there is more and more units being cranked out right now. 19 roaches actually coming in over here, uh, along with the rest of this. I think first has been broken here. He's been broken, Tases. You are oh, completely right. That. Oh, my God. Take that. Ro there you go. Takes the robo out. Nothing left, man. He's just going to be making stalkers, and you're never going to hold on with just stalkers against this. And, and, uh, clearly, the Zealot warp in back in the Zerg's base was not effective. Uh, and roaches are just parade pushing across this map uh, as the remaining stalkers are being picked off. 104 supply to 160. More warping rounds come, but I don't believe it's going to be enough here for Hyva uh, to lose this game. You know, it, he may end up losing his army, but back at home, he can like redrone instantly. He can make whatever units he wants instantly, basically. And with uh, killing the Robo was one of the huge parts there. Not only did he kill the sentries, kill the Mothership Corps, kill the Colossus, uh, you know, he, he killed the Robo, which means there is no real splash damage here. And first, yeah. because he's having to warp in more sentries again to deal with this, and having to warp in more stalkers, isn't going to have high templars to this go with is his a side bad sign for Protoss, usually when they're stuck making stalkers. Yes, because it is they can a bad blink sign. and micro them. Um, but yeah, you get those few sentries out, and I mean that's that's a band aid solution for now. Yeah. And Hiva, we know how Hiva plays. He's just going to make units and units and units. So. The actual best thing for first right now is to Super Turtle. But even with Super Turtle, I don't think it's going to work. Look at this. We're going to see some blinding clouds coming up here, I think. Oh, it's going to be so powerful. All right, there there's the oh. blinding clouds. Really nicely done. Got to so get in that well position here. Uh, the roaches, again, just moving around. The force fields now. Uh, time warp, definitely a good move to use right there. But there is just too much of Hiva's army right now. That is right. He's actually spine sending crawlers. spine crawlers up here. No, mind you, the creep is actually getting pushed that far up, so he <laughs> can't do that. Yeah, he's going to suck some energy out of them for now. Oh, that's and, uh, so sick. Yeah, that's it's so a, sick. It's a really nice move. And, uh, you know, this is this is a tough spot being another nice beautiful blinding, blinding cloud. cloud. Almost time to burrow those spine crawlers you suck an energy out of. <laughs> wow. Uh, just one immortal down here that's now getting targeted here. First is just trying to hold on, and he's hoping that Hyva does nothing but make roaches. But even hoping for that may cause his death. Yeah, uh, getting now up the ramp here. There's just so many roaches. There are about to be a couple of mortals, so uh, that's going to help. Actually, there was a warp prism harassment during this. Check the drones here. Uh, he actually he's killed 18 drones now, so that's actually not that bad. GG. Great, but yeah, what? That's uh, Hyva GG. Did Hyva just lose that? Yep. Did we? I guess we well, did not catch. We something. didn't catch on the camera. He actually he killed all the drones at the third base. Wow. That was okay. actually. That's too bad that we didn't catch it because it makes funny. us look dumb. Well, guys, just so you know, we didn't actually get a shot of. Uh, in case you're confused, why on earth would Hyva tap out there? Yeah. Yeah. As Artosa said, uh, we, he was able to check it with the last two seconds. There yeah, was a warm prism harass that killed off enough drones to where first would basically be able to hang on and yeah, then push just Hiva back. Barely so. Now, see, that's too bad because Hiva, like for instance, if that warp prism had not occurred, I think he still breaks him without too much problem. It's just immortals yeah. being made with with uh, roaches and with four bases and the decent drone count he had, I think it really wouldn't have been a problem for Hiva whatsoever. And I, I know it wouldn't really have been a problem for him. Well, uh, now we're going to go on to our final match. Yeah, it's going to be right. first against Jockji. The rematch. We'll see how well uh, first can do this time. Yeah. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.